Hey guys, it's Jonathan coming to you from the world famous Kissimmee Muscle 24 Hour Gym and wanted to talk a little bit today about uh, competition in bodybuilding and what competition has done for me. And it's done a, a couple of things. Um, overall, um, being in competition um, as an NPC bodybuilder since 1990 now, since I was 19 years old, having had the opportunity to compete in now four decades, teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, and now going into my fifth decade of competition, in bodybuilding, the overarching thing that bodybuilding competition has done for me is it drives my behavior. And what I mean by that is in a couple of different ways it drives my behavior. By having a date out in front of me for competition, it drives my behavior as I gear up each week progressively closer to the competition, things get more intense. And so certainly from that perspective, uh, competition drives my behavior. But also, the other part, competing against other great athletes um, seeing what somebody else has, has put up on the stage drives my behavior, but also having a fair and unbiased accounting from the judges. Um, getting feedback from judges has been something that's driven my behavior um, over the years as well. And I'll give you an example of that. Uh, one of the competitions where um, feedback from judges drove my behavior for years and continues to drive my behavior today was the 1992 NPC Mr. Missouri competition. And in this competition, I'd competed uh, since 1990. This was my first open competition that I had done. Um, the day before this competition, I, I competed in the NPC Mr. Springfield competition, certainly a smaller competition. I won the overall in that one. And my goal for the open light heavyweight at the NPC uh, 1992 Mr. Missouri competition, my goal was to just crack the top five. I just wanted to be in that group of top performers in that competition. And to give you an idea of the field and the depth of competition um, in, in this particular contest, um, the day of that show, there were 18 light heavyweights competing for the title, um, and then the overall, obviously. And so just to crack that top five was a really big deal at that time. And so that's, I knew I wasn't as big as these other guys. Um, I knew, though, I'd be able to compete with my symmetry, I knew my conditioning was very good and I'd be able to compete there. And I knew my presentation was excellent because I'd spent so much time working on it. And so I uh, believed that I could make that top five. And feedback from the judges at this particular competition, there were two pieces of feedback that drove me for years. The first, when that group of 18 guys came out on stage, they spent some time doing quarter turns, they spent some time running us through mandatory poses, and on the judging panel the day of this competition, there were two IFBB judges. One was a Mr. Olympia judge, uh, Mike Barberi. And Mike said to the group, he said, fellas, we're gonna take some time with you guys because this is the best light heavyweight class we've ever seen. And so, wow, what, what a statement to just be competing in this best light heavyweight class they'd ever seen. To me, that, that was a big deal. I was part of that group and so, the next step of this competition was to pull out the top five and to see who was gonna be competing for that top five spots. And I was pulled in that group of the top five. Again, this was my first open competition. I knew I wasn't as big as these other guys, but I felt like I had something to, to offer in this uh, contest. To give you a, a better idea of just how good this, this group of um, competitors was, the guy that won the light heavyweights in the overall that year, Mr. Missouri for 1992, Craig Chambers, excellent bodybuilder, good national bodybuilder. In 1993, the second place finisher in this class, Mike Patton, won the heavyweight in the overall Mr. Missouri competition. Good national competitor, as high as second place at Masters Nationals. Um, just a real competitor, won the Mr. Missouri competition a couple of times. The third place finisher that year won the following year, the overall light heavyweight and overall Mr. Missouri competition. The fourth place finisher that year also won the Mr. Kansas. And then the fifth place finisher, which was me in this competition, the next year won the overall light heavyweight and overall Mr. Missouri competition. So every one of the top five in that class came back in subsequent years to win the overall Mr. Missouri uh, title. And so it was just that deep of a class. And so being part of that drove my behavior. I also, when I competed, I would try to find a way to get honest feedback from, from the judges. And feedback from judges is different than the feedback you get from your peers, from your family, and from your friends. Um, your friends tend to tell you um, things that make you feel good. 
they tend to tell you that in this particular picture where you look your best versus how everybody looks their worst, that you were the best guy or gal on stage. And there's certainly some bias that comes along with it. They love you, they, they've seen you uh, make these changes over time, they're pulling for you. And so that's inevitable. To be able to get good, candid feedback, constructive feedback from the judges was always something I wanted to do to be able to push myself to that next level. And so the day following, um, this Mr. Missouri competition in 1992, I went down to breakfast at the hotel hoping that I would find some of these judges down there eating breakfast. And they were there, and I looked for an opening to, to go over and talk with them. And unfortunately, they were deep into business and very involved, and I didn't want to bother them. So I ended up eating my breakfast, and then I was on my way out the door when um, one of the other IFBB judges, Dennis Coy, stopped me. And he said, congratulations on your competition. And remember, I was fifth place in this competition. And here, an IFBB judge is congratulating me on my performance of being the fourth person to lose to the overall winner. And, and I thought that was meaningful, um, the fact that he was congratulating me on making it in that top five, because it was a, quite an accomplishment just to do that. But then what he said stuck with me for a number of years, and I carry it with me still today. He said, with your symmetry and with your shape, you put on some size and you're going to be a very dangerous man. And so, wow, to hear this from somebody who's judging the top Mr. Olympia athletes, that you're on the right track, you've got a future in this sport. Um, there are so many times in a competition when we get tired, when we get emotional, we're, we're um, We've drawn down everything that we can put into this, and then if, if the competition doesn't turn out the way we wanted it to, we didn't win the overall, for instance, or let's just say we missed our peak and didn't come in as good as we should have. Um, it can be very defeating, and there's a, a strong emotional sense to want to just give up and just quit. And so for that day, for him to be able to say, you're doing a good job, you should keep doing this. That I carried with me for a very long time, still carry it with me today. I flash forward to 1995 to my first national competition, the NPC Collegiate Nationals in Pittsburgh, um, Gary, Gary Udith's show. On Friday night, I was completely dehydrated. I didn't account for the heat in Pittsburgh in the middle of the summer. Couldn't get a pump, went out on stage, wasn't my best drank three gallons of water between then and the night show on Saturday, filled out, my carbs went to where they were supposed to, to go, ended up finishing second place to um, a competitor that a couple years later uh, became an IFBB pro, good uh, competitive pro. And I remember thinking, wow, this was a lot of time and effort spent for a very small amount of time on stage. I didn't end up accomplishing what I wanted to accomplish. And Myself, I thought, maybe this will be my last competition. Maybe I don't want to continue doing this. It was pretty emotional. I was very hungry. I had pro tan all over me. I was dirty. And I just wanted to eat and get some rest. And I was leaving the auditorium with my second place trophy. And I felt a, a hand on my shoulder. And I turned around to see who it was. I didn't recognize the gentleman. Um, he told me he was the chairman for Louisiana NPC. He was one of the judges in the competition. And he said, he was almost angry when he said this to me. He said, where were you last night? And what he meant by that was, why was the guy that was on stage tonight so different from the guy that was on stage last night when we did the prejudging? And I told him what mistakes I had made. And he said, you would have won this whole show had you been in the shape that you were in tonight, last night when we did prejudging. And so for me, wow, that's um, telling me on a national stage that I belong in. And so, it, it's moments like these where the judges can give you a little bit of feedback that continues to drive your behavior, continues to move you forward. And that's, in 1995, um, that feedback I got from that particular judge was the reason after a 17-hour drive back home, I decided I was gonna compete in the Mr. Missouri competition um, the following weekend, and then went back to train legs the next day, peaked, hit my peak just right, won the overall Mr. Missouri competition that year, and then I knew I needed to sit down with uh, NPC judges and become a, an NPC judge. Um, began test judging at that point because I want to be there and I wanted to be there at that moment when somebody was deciding whether they should go on or whether they should call it a career. And 